Dr. Jesse Sanders, owner and chief veterinarian of Aquatic Veterinary Services. I'm also the author of the recently published How to Kill Your Koi. Today is the last chapter. This is chapter eight, How to Help a Sick Koi. This is based on one of the most heartbreaking myths that I hear on a regular basis, which is don't bother trying to save a sick fish. Just go buy another one, which I'm sorry, you have bought this fish, you have brought it into your home, into your livelihood. You are now responsible for giving them the happiest, healthiest, longest life that you can give them. Please do not give up on a sick animal, especially when you could very easily do something about it. So how do you know if a fish is sick? Well, there's two different forms of disease, the physical and then behavioral signs of disease. Physical signs of disease are a little bit easier to spot. So this can be changes in color, missing scales, torn fins, asymmetrical body, etc. It's basically what your fish looks like. Behavioral signs of disease is how your fish is acting. So this might be a decreased appetite, unable or difficulty swimming, or any sort of buoyancy disorder. So we have links and another seminar on this if you're interested, which I'll include in the description below. Most common causes of sick fish are going to be secondary to poor water quality. And why is this? Well, when you're in poor water quality, this is stressful for the fish. So just like stress in us, we start to release cortisol and other stress hormones. And you know, that really gives us that fight or flight response. So if it's an acute stressor, we fix the situation, get out of it. But if it persists, it becomes chronic stress. And this can have deteriorated immune function, reproduction, and growth. So that immune function in particular, especially since, you know, koi swim in a toilet, essentially, there's going to be bacteria and parasites just waiting for a chink in their immunological armor to come down so then they can take over that fish. So most common bacterial infections are going to be environmental infections that are taking advantage of a weak fish that has chronic stress due to poor water quality, or not the right food, or there's too many fish in the pond, or there's other problems with your water chemistry. So a lot of the times bacterial infections might not need treatment. Uh, even though you're reaching for the antibiotic on the shelf, there's another primary stressor that yes, that antibiotic will fix, but only temporarily. Parasite infestations are most common when a new fish is added to the pond. Quarantine is your friend. Be sure to refer to chapter one, all about that. Viral disease, um, in koi there are a couple. Um, we have koi herpes virus, carpedema virus, spring viremia on carp, and then carp pox, which is the most common, and I'm pretty sure it's endemic in our area. It's very rare that I have a pond that doesn't have at least one fish that has clinical signs of that. Um, thankfully, with carp pox, um, this is another herpes virus, but it really doesn't cause any serious health issues other than, you know, a couple lumps and bumps, some thickening of their fins. They'll be just fine otherwise. Um, fungus usually is going to be secondary to poor immune function or it's riding along on dead tissue. So a lot of the times that's going to be very easy to treat, um, but we also have more diseases in our book, including egg binding, which is not actually egg binding, it's more often undiagnosed cancer, predator attacks, hikui, sunburn, heavy metal toxicities, and lightning strikes. So if you do have a sick fish, what do you do? Step number one, how many fish are sick? So if it's just one fish versus a pond full of fish, that'll really kind of tell you where you should be looking. So one fish, you know, might be, you know, just that particular fish, could be cancer, could be a parasite, could be bacterial. If it's the whole pond, water chemistry, water chemistry, oh yeah, uh, water chemistry, diet, could be viral. So again, it's gonna point which way we're gonna go. Step number two, check your water chemistry, please. Liquid-based test kit. It's not that hard. And if your water chemistry is bad, fix it. So we have a link in the description below of all the different scenarios that could go with your water chemistry and how to fix them correctly. Step number three, 
offer your fish a little bit of food if it is an appropriate temperature. This will tell us, you know, a fish that's not eating, that's a big problem. Fish that is, you know, a little off, still eating, maybe not as big a deal. So if you have a pond full of fish, your water chemistry is okay, but they're not eating, call your veterinarian. Step four, if you have all those results, your veterinarian will be able to tell you how urgent this situation is. And that's gonna be really important so you can get your fish help fast if they are very sick. And if they, you know, just need some muttering, need to fix some minor water chemistry issues, they're still eating, maybe is not a big deal, but certainly something to keep an eye on. So that is the end of our chapters on our new book, How to Kill Your Koi. I hope you learned something. And if you wanna pick up a copy, we hope that it is of benefit to you and your fish. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope you have a great day. For help with your fish, please visit the American Association of Fish Veterinarians at fishvets.org or the World Aquatic Veterinary Medical Association at wavma.org.